Welcome to Feline Body Language and Enrichment. This module is for all staff and volunteers who interact with shelter felines. What are these cats saying? This cat's ears are forward and is meeting your gaze. The body looks relaxed and without tension. You should feel comfortable approaching this cat. This cat's ears are slightly back and its pupils are dilated and big. Some tension is seen in the body. You should be cautious when approaching this cat. These cats are approaching and have relaxed bodies. Their tails are up and slightly curved at the top. You should approach these cats. This cat's ears are flat and his body is low. The body is tense. You should not touch this cat. Talking to this cat may make it more relaxed. This cat's ears are forward, eyes half open, and body quite relaxed. You can approach this cat. This cat's ears are flat and back, and its body is tense. It is hissing and the right paw is ready to swipe. Never approach this cat and always report this kind of behavior. Petting cats the right way will help keep the cats free of stress and from injuring you. Watch this video to learn more. We are here to talk about why your cat beats you up. Now, let's go get catified! Today, we, we are in the land of the supermarket question. The supermarket question is, Jackson, I got this cat, he's really, really cool. And, and every time we're sitting together, out of the blue, randomly, he attacks me. Of course, it's never out of the blue. It's, it's always because of something. And secondly, yes, you may have bites and scratches on you, but is that an attack? Most times, when folks are sitting here just like me and him, we're just sitting around, we're not doing much of anything, Good Pishi. Good Pishi. Oh, I love Pishi. Look at this. Look at this. Bye Pishi. See a Pishi. Right? And gone. Why is that? Petting induced overstimulation aggression. And what happens there is that certain cats, and this is physiological, this is not a matter of temperament, cannot take being pet like this over and over and over again. It actually fills them with a, a sort of static like a balloon, filled, filled, and then bang. You don't realize when you're sitting watching TV with your cat, how you're petting them. So what is the cure for this? All right, let's look at number one. Be observant. Know when your cat is getting worked up. As you're petting, you're going to notice the tail start to twitch just a little. And then that graduates. And then it starts going like this. And then you are going to get bit. Then there's what I call back electricity, right down the back. It's a cat going, Ooh. In terms of stimulation, they're just getting to that point. It's up to you to notice these things. And, and if you notice that, the, the, the aggression is not going to happen. Know where your cat enjoys being pet and for how long. I'm gonna demonstrate with Valoria the opposite of the full body pet. Valoria here, 23 years old of fun. So now watch, out comes the finger. You see how she guides me. Here's the finger, look at that. See how she guides me? This is a technique, I wish I had a better name for it. Right now I call it the finger nose. I present my finger like a nose to the cat. The idea is to let them pet you. Overstimulation happens constantly with cats because they are this direct channel for energy. And proactivity is key, folks. You've got to play with your cats. You've got to get that energy out on a regular basis. So then when they're sitting on your lap, that balloon is not filled to 90%. So all it takes is five pets and kaboom, they blow. Again, remember, you are in control of putting air in the cat balloon. Let that air out as the day goes on. Don't keep putting air into it and don't be surprised when the balloon pops. From now on, when it does happen to you, I know this is really hard, pull yourself emotionally out of that moment and say, what just happened here? When you understand that part of things, you're gonna stop blaming the cat for doing things to you. All right, folks, you can find me pretty much anywhere. 
If you want to find me, hashtag Team Cat Mojo, hashtag My Cat From Hell, uh, hashtag Team Anna Mojo. Let's talk about appropriate play for adoptable cats. Use toys, not hands, when playing with cats. If a cat begins to play with your hands, redirect to a toy. If a cat gets worked up, freeze. Pulling hands away quickly may result in injury. Cats love watching feather wands and other such toys. This is a great way to encourage mental stimulation without directly handling the cats. Remember, continue with all level 1 activities when you have time. How do diseases get around in a shelter? Common ways are through animal handling, bodily fluids, and airborne. Fomites are any object or substance that carries germs or parasite from one animal to another. Take a moment to think of some things that might be fomites. The short answer is everything is a fomite. From the shirts and shoes you wear, to the tools you use to clean, to the toys you use to play with the animals. It is our responsibility to prevent the spread of diseases. Sanitize your hands between cages and provide sanitizer to customers so they can do the same. Animal handling is kept to a minimum. Interested customers can hold anyone they like, but staff and volunteers should hold only those animals that have been approved for holding. Currently, those are felines with a light blue sticker on their kennel card and canines over six months of age. Because the shelter houses so many animals so close together, it is much easier for diseases to transfer from one animal to the next. Common diseases seen in dogs are kennel cough, parvovirus, and demodex. Each of these can only be transferred from dog to dog. Common diseases seen in cats are a respiratory infection, panleukopenia, FIV, and feline leukemia. Each of these can only be transferred from cat to cat. Heartworms is a disease that affects both dogs and cats, but is transferred by mosquitoes only. Scabies, a type of mange, and ringworm can affect cats and dogs and can also be transferred to humans. For more information on diseases, you can go to our volunteer website at www.jacksumean.org slash current volunteers. Volunteers and staff should learn to identify sick animals at the shelter. Symptoms can appear in all parts of the animal body. In these cat's eyes, you can see one eye is closed more and the inner eyelid is swollen. Sometimes a green discharge can be seen. In this ear, there is something brown which could be dirt, ear mites, or even yeast. This nose has a very clear green discharge, indicating an infection. The skin on this dog is red with some open sores, showing irritation. The hair on this cat is missing and the skin is red and may indicate either stress or disease. The feces of this dog is very loose and may indicate an intestinal issue. An exam request form is available to report issues to the medical staff. All symptoms should be written in this form and turned in. Animal information, location, and symptoms are marked. Never diagnose, just list the symptoms. If you're unsure if what you are writing is a diagnosis, just ask someone. Like cleaning a kennel is for a minor mess and the animal is returning to their kennel. Put on gloves, sweep up any debris. If there are feces, pick it up or scoop it out. Spot spray and wipe down the area if needed. Replace towel if needed and replace water. Deep cleaning a kennel is for a major mess or the animal is not returning to their kennel. Put on gloves, remove all items from the kennel. Sweep up any debris. Spray the entire kennel and let stand for five minutes. Wipe down the entire kennel. Place a new towel, empty bowls, and if a cat kennel, a litter box with litter. Everything that came out of the kennel or was used to clean the kennel must be disinfected. Dishes and litter pans are washed as you go. Never leave dirty items for someone else to clean. Can your pets get sick? Always keep your pets up to date on vaccinations and change your volunteer clothes to minimize disease transfer especially if you have an animal at home that is sick, elderly, or under six months of age. The shelter medical staff always moves animals we know are sick to isolation, but that doesn't help for the few days before they show signs and symptoms and are still sharing germs. Always read kennel information for notices on sick animals. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch this skills development module. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to contact us anytime.